Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. Today's session using drop shadows with text by Steve Spence. Brought to you by Conde Systems. In this session, we'll talk about drop shadow with text. To take a closer look to see what it really is, let's zoom in on one of the shadows and you can see the difference between it and the text. We'll zoom in even a little more. And now you can see the individual pixels that make up the shadowing. Now, this looks a lot like it might be a bitmap. It is not. It is called a raster image. It is similar to a bitmap in that you can see the individual pixels, but it is not a bitmap. In the letter, you can see the vector characteristics of text where it has rigid straight lines. And no matter how big or small we make this thing, it's going to stay exactly the same. This is not true with the drop shadow. In the drop shadow, one of the things that you'll want to do is to create the drop shadow in the finished size. You really don't want to enlarge it from the size that you created. You can reduce it, but you should not increase the size of it. I can show you the reason we don't want to enlarge the drop shadow very easily. Just select the text that we've done here, and we're going to enlarge it a great deal. And as we do, you can see that it hasn't added any pixels to it. In fact, you can see a dividing line in here where it stretched it to its limit. What we want to do is create our drop shadow and, if anything, reduce it. By reducing it, you actually reduce the size of the pixels, which make them less conspicuous when we go to sublimate it. Sublimation is so precise that it can actually show the pixels, and that's something you don't want to do. You just want it to look smoky. You don't want it to actually show the pixels. So, just a word of caution. Uh, don't, uh, don't get caught up in the fact that you can do anything you want to with this text once you add the drop shadow. What, if you're going to make the text larger, you should take the drop shadow out of it, increase the size of the text, and then add the drop shadow. Okay, enough of that. Let's actually go down and do something with a piece of text and add drop shadow to it. As you can see, this is nice sharp text. It's just typical text, nothing special about it. And we're going to go over to our toolbar and we're going to drop down to the blend tool. The blend tool has a flyout menu and one of the options on that flyout menu is drop shadow. And when we click on drop shadow, we get a cursor with a little square box. And we're going to take that over to the left hand side of our text. You don't have to actually get on the node or anything. Just get over on the left side of the text and just stretch the cursor across the entire area of text. Now actually you can take that drop shadow and you can do anything you want to with it. You can make it much larger. You can put it at all kinds of angles. You can do all kinds of things. Why you would need to do that, I don't know. But if you do, then that's your capability. Now, we've added drop shadow, and you can see it's very light. And that's usually the way you'll want it to be. Just a little bit around the text to give it a little push, if you will, so that it jumps out from its background. You can, of course, use any color text that you want. The shadow will always be the same by default, but you can change it if you want to. The way you change your drop shadow color is by, again, clicking on drop shadow and you get this line. This is the control box for the drop shadow. You can see you can move it any way you want to. And we want to put ours right over top of it. We can go up here 
and we can change that drop shadow to any color we want. Let's make it orange. And you can see we don't have a lot of drop shadow there, so it doesn't jump out real harsh. And that's usually a good thing with sublimation. Sublimation tends to highlight that shadow a little bit anyway. And if you get too much, you start getting those pixels, which you just don't want to do. But we can change it to whatever color we want. We'll set it on green and leave it at that for the time being. Now, say for instance that's not as much shadow as you want. You want more shadow like we have in this text up here. So we can change that. And we do that by adjusting the transparency tool. And when the drop shadow is selected, the toolbar up here becomes one that controls that drop shadow. And we're going to click on that little uh, control lever right there. And you can see when we do, it creates one that we can actually use. And we're going to move it one side or the other. And you can see it gets darker or lighter, depending on how we use it. And there we've got a great deal more shadow than what we had before. And uh, then we can control also the feathering of it and we can control the feathering. We handle it the same way. We click on the little control knob and we can feather it out. Make it actually physically larger, more dominant, until it no longer tracks the letter but just kind of the word, just kind of puts a background on it. Or we can go back and make it more distinct to the word or to the letter. We take it back all the way, we actually get almost a double letter. But now there's better ways to do it if that's what you want. If you're just looking for two colors, there's better ways to do it. But we'll take this back to a more reasonable feathering, about 50% maybe. And we'll zoom out so you can see what we've got. There's your drop shadow. That's actually a little too much. Let's take that back to, let's make that about 20%. And you can see we're back kind of where we started. Now, one of the things that's difficult here that can be very time-consuming for sublimators is this is a trial and error kind of technique, uh, t effect. It's not one that's pure science. You just have to look at it. Different text requires a different amount of shadow. Different colors requires a different amount of shadow. If we go over here and we select black, for instance, uh, you can see that it's harsher, it's stronger than it would be if we do gray, for instance, which almost disappears, or yellow, which kind of works pretty good at that particular point. So you can work with the various colors for background or foreground. And we can select yellow for our letter. And although that might suck your eyeballs out, it certainly can be done. There's red with a yellow background. You get the idea. So this is drop shadow with text. Now there are a couple of other things that I'll show you just real quick and then we'll move on. We can, as I showed you before, we can actually change the direction of it, make it at an angle. That's what this little tool is for. We can set a precise angle if you want to and set it on 45 and you can see what happens. If we set it on 180, it moves all the way to the left. And 360 happens to be the default to put it back over the text. We also have some presets. And these do just exactly what they say. They move the drop shadow above and to the right or to the bottom, to the right, or uh, perspective, 
That's kind of cool. Shows like it's standing up on something. Perspective to different sizes or different uh, angles. Can even do a glow. Like there was neon behind it. There are other ways of doing that particular effect, by the way, to make it look like there are letters with neon behind them. Now, let's go back to this first one that we showed, which is to the right and top. And you'll notice again, we have this little tool. This is our control box. We can move it up and down. We can move it back and forth. We can do anything we want to with it using that little control box. So you can start with the preset and then change it. This slider makes it darker or lighter. So we have pretty much full control. Now let me help you understand how that's working. We have selected that we want the shadow to be black. It looks gray, obviously, and that's because we're mixing two colors. We're mixing black and white. The further up the scale we go, the more black we're introducing to the shadow until we go all the way and it really is black. Now notice that it is not sharp and crisp like the other text and the reason for that is because this is a raster graphic. It works like a bitmap, although it is not a bitmap. It works just like one, so it's not something that you would want to use. Let me select the drop shadow again. It's not something that you would want to use as text, but it works great for creating a shadow. Okay, that's the most of what you will probably use as a sublimator. Now, there is a little more, and we're going to show you that in just a second. There's one more thing I'd like to show you before we leave this subject, and that is how to separate the shadow from the text. I'm not sure quite why a sublimator would want to do that, but just in case. We've already created our drop shadow text. We're going to go over to the drop shadow, and we get the line through it, and we're going to go to the control box, and we're going to move it just a little bit. Now, why you have to move it, I don't know. But in this version, at least, I cannot get this to work any other way. But now that I've moved it, I can go to Arrange, and I get this option, Break Drop Shadow Group Apart. I'm going to click on that, and then I'm going to click on my Pick Tool, and I can actually separate the two. They are now two totally separate objects. I can put them back together or I can use the shadow alone. Again, why you would want to do this, I'm not sure. But if you do need some shadow text, uh, this is one way to do it. And that finishes us up for Drop Shadow with Text. Hope you found it helpful.